How's it going Thursday, February 9th, 2023? Book I wrote. The best gloves on the baseball field. The all-time defensive player matchups. Here's the question for the day and for this video. Who was the best defensive first baseman? of all time. I'm focusing on Hall of Fame players in this video and in this book. There's a lot of good first basemen who are not in the Hall of Fame. Keith Hernandez comes to mind. He was a great first baseman, but he's not in the Hall of Fame. But there are 26 players 25 of them are in the Hall of Fame, but 26 I'm dealing with because Pete Rose played 939 games at first base. So I got to add him in because to me, he's a Hall of Famer. The question is, who's the best defensively? Not offense, defensive. Here are the players. Eddie Murray, Jake Beckley, Camp Hansen, Lou Garrett, Willie McCovey, George Sussler, Gil Hodges. Jimmy Fox, Jim Botley, Tony Perez, Roger Connor, Orlando Cepeda, Johnny Mize, Dan Brothers, Bill Terry, George Kelly, Ernie Banks, Rod Carew, Hank Greenberg, Jim Tomey, Stan Musial, Frank Chance, Frank Thomas, Harmon Killebrew, Pete Rose, and David Ortiz. You may say, well, wait, some of these guys played other positions. Yes, they did. But I'm dealing with them because these are the most games they played at at their position was first base, these guys. 26 players, 25 are in the Hall of Fame. Who's the best? Defensively, not offensively. Defensively. Who do you think? Let's go through the stats and let's go through categories and let's look what they did in their career. Do all the numbers, see who comes out the best across the board. And here are the categories, games played, fielding percentage, chances, put outs, assist, double plays, innings, and fewest errors. Let's look what they did in their career. Who wins it? Games played. Who won that? Eddie Murray, 2,413 games. Jake Beckley, second, 2383. Here are the top five. Camp Anson, 2152. Luke Gehrig, 2137. And Willie McCovey, 2045. The rest of these guys go down the list. The fewest would be David Ortiz at 278 games. So he was a DH. So five guys played over 2,000 games. The rest of the guys are in the 1900s, 18, some guys just 1,000 games and so forth. Okay, I ranked them, 1 through 26. Eddie Murray wins that. How about fielding percentage? Who wins it? Three guys tied. Ernie Banks, Jim Tomey, and Pete Rose all had a 9, .994 fielding percentage among the 26. The rest of the guys, 993, 992, all the way down to 9.71. So those two guys, Eddie Murray on the games, Banks, Tommy, and Rose on feeling percentage. Chances. Who among the 26 had the most chances at first base? Jake Beckley. 25,552 chances at first base. How about that? Even though Eddie Murray has the most games, Beckley wins it. But here's what I did. Since all the other guys did not play the same number of games as Eddie Murray, why not, as far as comparing them, make all the guys presupposed in a fictional world 
They all play the same number of games as Eddie Murray, 2,413. Who, according to their percentage of how many chances per game they average in their career, would win that matchup if they all play the same number of games? You know what? I did it. You know who won it? George Kelly. He would have ended up with the most chances if he played 2,413 games because he averaged 11.1 chances per game. He would have ended up with 26,758 chances if he played 2,413 games. Like all the rest of the guys, they're all playing the same number of games. You following me? Jake Beckley had the most chances recorded. But George Kelly had the best per game percentage. And if you add it up, he comes out number one. How about that? Let's go to putouts. Who had the most putouts at first base? I got it. Jake Beckley again. 23,755. But if they all play the same number of games, who has the best percentage of putouts at first base? George Kelly won it again. 25,048 he would have ended up with because he averaged 10.4 putouts per game. What do you think of that? Let's go to assist. Who would win that one? At first base, who had the most assists? Eddie Murray, because he had the most games. So it seems like he would get the most assists, right? He got it. 1,865 assists he recorded. But if they all play the same number of games among all these guys, who wins it? Who had the best percentage of assists per game? George Sisler, 0.78 assists per game played. So if he played 2,413 games, he would come out on top and he would beat Eddie Murray. He would have had one. 1,873. He beats him by eight. Eight assist. Remember, we got to make him say to play the same number of games to figure out who has the best percentage of, of getting chances and assists per game. George Sisler would have won that. Eddie Murray comes in second. All right, that was assist. How about double plays? Who among first basemen? Had the most double plays. Eddie Murray, 2,023 double plays he was involved in. But according to the percentage, who had the best percentage of double plays at first base? Rod Carew, how about that? He had 11, you know, he only played, let's see, about 1,000 games for. For Carew, but he had 1,130 double plays. So he averaged 0.95 double plays per game played. Make him play 2,413 games, and he would have ended up with 2,297 double plays, which would have beat Eddie Murray. What do you think of that analysis? You like it or dislike it? I like it. All the catchers play the same number of games. Who has the best percentage? I mean, that's fair, right? Rod Carew wins the double plays. How about that? I didn't think of that one. Innings. Well, who had the most innings at first base? Eddie Murray. 21,156 innings at first base. Beats everybody. So no disputing that one. How about few, how about fewest errors? Hmm. Who had among first basemen the fewest errors? David Ortiz, he had 22 errors at first base, but he only played 278 games. 
So what was his percentage? He committed 0.08 errors during his career at first base per game play. 0.08, that's a percentage. So you got to look. If they all play the same number of games, who had the best percentage of fewest errors at first base? Pete Rose. He had 51 errors at first base. But if he plays 2,413 games, he would have ended up with 139 errors because he had a .06 error per game play. Good first baseman. Is that fair? Pete Rose? Comes out to be the best first baseman as far as fewest errors. How about that? So we've gone over. I've ranked them as far as uh, percentages and so forth. How about this? Who had the best score across the board? What do I mean? They have all the categories, right? You have games played, who came number one two, through 26. Fielding percentages, chances, put outs, assists, double plays, innings, and fewest errors. Let's go across the board, add the numbers where they ranked, see who had the lowest number. Whoever had the lowest number comes out with the best defensive ability at, at first base. Would you agree with that? That's what I did. Who, um, across the board in all the categories, wins it? Eddie Murray. Why? Well, he ranked first in games played, fourth in fielding percentage, 16th in chances, 16 in putouts, two in assist, sixth in double play, first in innings, and seventh in few, fewest errors. So his score, if you add them all up, is 53. That's the lowest number among the 26. Who is number two? Bill Terry. I'll give you the order of the rankings. Eddie Murray, 53. Bill Terry, 65. Remember, we're counting from low to high. The lowest number indicates that you ranked very well among all your peers in all the categories. Bill Terry was second. Ernie Banks, 79, third. George Kelly, 80. Jimmy Fox, 83. Gil Hodges, 84. George Sisler, 85. Rod Carew, 97. Jim Tomey, 98. Lou Gehrig, 100. Stan Musial, 100. Johnny Mize, 101. Jake Beckley, 102. Jim Botney, 104. Hank Greenberg, 105. Camp Hansen, 109. Orlando Cepeda, 110. Pete Rose, 115. Tony Perez, 116. Dan Brothers, 124. Roger Connor, 128. It's a ranking. Willie McCovey, 130. Frank Chance, 139. Frank Thomas, 149. Harmon Killebrew, 154. And David Ortiz, 171. Those are their rankings. Eddie Murray wins it. Would you consider Eddie Murray to be the best defensive first baseman of all time? According to the ranking, he wins it. Why? First in games played. Fourth in fielding percentage. 16th out of 26 in chances and 16th in putouts. Okay, so that's a high number. He's 16 out of 26. But he comes in two and assist. Second. He comes in six in double plays, one in innings. That's a key. He has the most games and the most innings. And then seventh and fewest errors.
I've seen Eddie Murray play on TV. Solid. Who would you consider uh, on this list to be really good first baseman? Ernie Banks came in first in fielding percentage. How about that? So did Jimmy Tomey and Pete Rose. Jake Beckley, he came in second in games and innings. So he's up there. Jimmy Fox, eh, he's in the middle of the pack right there. Bill Terry came in second. Because he was second in chances and second in putouts, fourth in assists, fifth in double plays. See, the lower the number, the better your score, the, the lower your score will be. And that indicates if you're ranking high, first, second, or third, or fourth, and then you add the numbers. Are you following how I did that? Look at, I'll do, I'll do it slowly so you understand how I got the number. Eddie Murray, first in games play, so one. Fourth in fielding, so you got one plus four is five, and you go on through it. 16, you add it, 16. 16 in chances, 16 in putouts, okay, two. Six in double play, one in innings, and seventh in fewest. So you add all those numbers, one plus four plus 16 plus 16 plus two plus six plus one plus seven equal 53, and that was the lowest. And the highest was David Ortiz. He's at 171. Why? Well, he's 26 in, in games, so that hurt, and 26 in innings. See, out of the 26 guys, he had the lowest number of games and in innings. That's why his ranking. He was ninth in fewest errors, but all the other numbers are high. That's how I came out. If, you, if you're going to look across the board in all those categories, where do they stand? And Eddie Murray wins it. And Bill Terry is number two. Ernie Banks, number three. George Kelly, number four. And Jimmy Fox, top five. As far as the best defensive first baseman of all time. Agree or disagree? Who do you like on this list? thought it was interesting that Pete Rose ranked first in fewest errors. Remember, all these guys are fictionally playing 2,413 games. And so you look at the percentage of what they did in all the, the games they played, and then you multiply, you add the games and multiply their percentage for the extra games played to come out where they stood. How about that? Rod Carew, remember him? He got first and double plays. Some of these other guys were interesting. George Kelly, first in chances and first in putouts. Wow. And some of the other guys, they rank second, third, or fourth in a certain category. And that's how I came up with this book. And I'm doing all the individual positions on the defensive. I did catchers in the previous episode, and this one is first baseman. Next episode will be second baseman. Who do you consider to be the, the greatest second defensive, the greatest defensive second baseman of all time? We'll get into it next. I'm out.